The Pilgrim Fathers represent the foundational event in American history. Just as the Exodus is a defining moment at which the Israelites became God's people, so too does the Exodus of families from the old world to the new represent the singular moment that the idea of America began. Americans look back at the events of the 17th century and draw from them ideas about personal liberty, freedom, individualism, and that spirit of free enterprise which has so defined America through the ages. We have this image of the Puritans as fleeing religious persecution in England to find a new life in the colonies. But how well does this reflect reality? Have we just made a story which says a lot more about us today than it does the people who lived back then? And what does Sunday sports in a Yorkshire village have to do with the wider story of early colonial America? Well, join me as we look at this part of Yorkshire's hidden history. One of the Pilgrim Fathers and later Governor of Plymouth Colony was from Yorkshire and called William Bradford, but this video isn't about him, it's about someone else. I just thought I'd mention it though because it was convenient. Rowley is a town in Massachusetts. It has around 6,000 inhabitants and is just a little bit bigger in size than Doncaster. But the original Rowley is a village in East Yorkshire, which is much smaller in both size and population. The Yorkshire Rowley was home to a minister named Ezekiel Rogers. Now, Rogers was a deeply sincere and devout man, and I believe that he did what he did out of genuine concern for the spiritual welfare of his congregation. In 1633, Charles I reissued James I's 1618 Book of Sports, which basically listed the sports and activities you were allowed to do on a Sunday. That doesn't seem a big deal, right? But this was abominable to the deeply religious 17th century Puritans. As Rogers wrote in his will in 1660, I enjoyed my liberty in the ministry about 17 years in comfortable sort, till for refusing to read that accursed book that allowed sports and God's holy Sabbath or Lord's Day, I was suspended and by it and other sad signs of the times driven with many of my hearers into New England, where I have lived in my pastoral office. So Rogers was suspended as a clergyman for refusing to read from this book, and so took his village and left for America. That might seem like a bit of an overreaction to us, but the only options available to Puritans at the time were either to conform to the Church of England or leave. So if you didn't want to give up your beliefs, then it was a case of... Now, this certainly fits our idea of the Puritans being a persecuted minority for refusing to conform. But to quote one of my favourite shows, the situation's a lot more nuanced than that. So let's rewind a bit. James I releases the Book of Sports in 1618. Well, why does he need to do that? Why does he need to make a list of what things you were allowed to do on a Sunday? Well, because for decades prior, the Puritans had been lobbying and campaigning to ban entertainment on Sundays. The Puritans wielded so much political power that James released the book in order to stop them from being able to ban fun. So let's recap. The Puritans wanted to ban Sunday entertainment. So James I releases a book of sports which says that you're allowed to do this stuff on Sundays. And it faces so much resistance and backlash that Charles I has to actually issue it again. And then Ezekiel Rogers gets upset about it and goes to America. Well. You remember the thing I said about the Puritans being seen as representing the American values of personal liberty and freedom of expression? Well, isn't wanting to stop people have fun on Sundays kind of the opposite of that? In fact, just a few years later, in 1643, the Puritans would order that the Book of Sports be burnt in London, and later they would take power after the English Civil War. What I'm trying to say is that the image we've constructed of the Puritans as being a persecuted minority who stood for individual liberty doesn't really line up with reality, because in fact they were quite a powerful group. Let me use another example. 
Just 10 years before Ezekiel Rogers and his village set sail for America, Edmund Arrowsmith was hung, drawn and quartered just for being a Catholic Jesuit priest. During the reign of Mary I, just 80 years previously, around 300 people had been burnt at the stake just for being Protestants. When you look at the sheer scale of religious violence in the 16th and 17th centuries, you begin to realise that well, the ultimatum which was delivered to the Puritans of either conform or leave was actually pretty lenient. To be given the option of leaving the country if you were disliked is actually a lot better than what a lot of people got. Without getting all into my Monty Python for Yorkshireman sketch, what I'm trying to get at is that leaving the country, luxury, we used to dream of being able to leave the country if people didn't like us. What I'm trying to say is that the image we've constructed about the Puritans says a lot more about us than it does about the people who actually lived in the 17th century. For example, there's nothing more American than sports on a Sunday, whether it's baseball or hockey or my favourite, obviously, American football. Sunday sports have become a part of American cultural life. By the way, I was much aggrieved to discover that my beloved Cleveland Browns actually have nothing to do whatsoever with the Cleveland region of Yorkshire. I was, I was very disheartened by that discovery. And there's nothing more American than the idea that the individual has the right to choose what to do with their life and that nobody should be going around interfering with that. So we're left with two options. We can either believe that these 17th century people perfectly encapsulated the values which modern Americans hold dear, or we can look at them for who they were. Deeply flawed? Absolutely. They tried to impose their way of life on others and then throw a hissy fit when they couldn't get their way. But they were people of firm and deep convictions who cared so much about staying true to what they believed in that they would rather leave home and never return than give up their beliefs and work hard to build communities which last to this day.